Hello and welcome to CFB UK, home of the UK's biggest college football fan page. For the fans, by the fans, we're here again, another segment of 4 from 4,000. If you haven't been here already, we don't know where you've been, but uh, if you haven't, well, why is it 4,000? Because we're about 4,000 miles away from the USA and we're bringing you exclusive interviews with NCAA B1 players from the States back to the UK. Now, we're so fortunate to be able to introduce you to our guest today. He was the highest recruited quarterback in Arizona State history. He transferred to Memphis and has thrown a whopping 59 touchdowns in just two seasons. Yes, I am repping the Memphis Tigers today, <laughs> and we are super lucky. I'm going to admit him now. Please welcome, live from Memphis, Tennessee, we've got Brady White, everybody. How are you doing, Brady? Good, how are you guys? I'm good. We're yeah, good, good, guys. Thanks. So, yeah, of course, just did your little intro there, I have to say, repping the Memphis top, of course. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so you're out in Tennessee right now. Uh, we are dealing with a little bit of a heat wave in the UK. It's like 75, 80, uh, but that's hot, hot for us. I've got the fan on behind. <laughs> what is it like out in Tennessee right now? Um, let me check. This week it's been kind of off and on. We've had some warm days and then had some rain um, a couple of days ago and like thunderstorms. It's right now it's mid seventies, but humidity is ninety five percent humidity. So damn, Ooh. Damn. <laughs> okay, ninety. Yeah. Well, that's how, well that what, that is one thing in the UK it is not it's not humid ever. Is it, <laughs> guys? Never is. No. No, no. I'm so, from the West Coast and it's not ever humid either. So, West Coast indeed, <laughs> Santa Clarita. We've been doing our, we've been doing our research. We've been doing our research. <laughs> Appreciate that. So Brady, um, thank you so much for joining us. As we, as we said, we are a UK fan page, the biggest college football fan page in the UK. We've got about a thousand fans in it now, and we're just trying to grow college football. Uh, NFL's been, you know, since we got the London Games over here. Uh, you know, we've really kind of been able to build and American football is so big in the UK right now, but hasn't really filtered as much down to the college level. Um, so we're trying to get it there. Um, so we're going to start off. Uh, I've got one. I've got a question for you. I'm not the first person to ask you this, but uh, I want to talk about a five year old Brady who stood in front of his class in kindergarten and read a poem about one day wanting to be an NFL player. Now, is that, that, is that true? And I remember, I've read an interview saying that you can't remember what was in the poem, but you've always known that you want to be an NFL player from, from that young. Yes, yeah. I, I, like, I couldn't recite the poem to you, but I do recall, um, I remember just back in, whether it was like preschool or kindergarten, like being very young and all those, um, like, what do you want to be if you grow up projects or like, what are your dreams? I remember all that stuff always incorporated and being an NFL football player or playing professionally. Um, it's just always been, um, it was my first love. It's always been my passion. I, you know, I played multiple sports growing up, but football was always the one that um, I really enjoy and cared about the most um, and always dedicated most of my time to. And so it's always been, um, that's always been, you know, my goal and, what I've had in my kind of vision for the future. And then I think just as I got older and progressed in my life, um, that realization starts coming, becoming clearer and clearer. And so you hit a point when you're like, all right, that's, that's really a possibility and, and really in, in sight for me. And it's time to get after it and go get it. Well, you, you say all that and it's very true, but when you were five years old and when you read that poem, if I'm again, hopefully not mistaken that you, at about five years old when you were playing you and people might not know this but you were playing o-line when you were like really really young is that right yeah i think my my first year or two um obviously it was flag football i didn't start playing like pop one or tackle football till i was about 10 um but the first two years i didn't have any clue what i was doing i like <laughs> I, I, I knew football and but like no grasp of like the concept of the game and what was the objective. I was just out there running around grabbing people's flags. And so I think I was stuck, you know, I was put on like O-line, D-line just because, you know, at that age, I didn't know I was doing those positions aren't really doing much. 
but after those two years is when I, I think I really start like I always threw the ball around, but I think I really started playing like quarterback after that first or second year and you know, the rest is history. So nice. The rest the rest is indeed history. Um <laughs> so yeah, you just mentioned you said it's really hot out where you're you're from originally, which is Santa Clarita, California. If people don't know where Santa Clarita is, it's it's like maybe like forty five minutes an hour north of Los Angeles or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah? exactly. So I mean, for us, like if you're from like an hour away from a big city, you tend to go to those big cities a lot. So we you know you grew up pretty close to LA. Did you did you go down to LA a lot? Go watch sport there. Go. Absolutely. Hang out there all the time. Yeah, I mean, hanging out wise, you know, it's more in your your own town and kind of the neighboring cities. But, um, I mean, yeah, growing up near LA, you're always going down there um, for events. You have Staples Center down there. You got a bunch of different um, type of social things you can do. As far as like football training, I was always driving down to LA just because that's where. Um, a lot you know that's kind of like the central point of southern california for the area and so that was a lot of um really high quality talent and training going down in those areas so that's where i would go um and then i think you know like my dad growing up he worked near la like closer mm. than where we live so um always heading down there whether you know it's to hang out with him or just to go get a lunch um and then you got a bunch of different college campuses down there, UCLA, USC, um, all near there. So plenty of time spent down in LA. There was a lot of, um, I think at that time, it was the Pac-10, not the Pac-12. And they always had their, um, the, uh, the Pac-10 tournament for basketball in Staples. So I remember you know, when those would hit, I'd get out of school early, get pulled out by my parents and get to drive down there for the day and go watch a bunch of basketball. So there's tons of memories down in L.A. I spent a lot of time down there, but it wasn't like the uh, the hangout spot, I guess, growing up. Sure. So <laughs> do you ever, did you ever go watch Kobe in the Lakers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I got Fine. to see the Lakers play, you know, a handful of times. Um, growing up, it was funny though, you know, like, and I don't know why it was, but, um, I always would root against like the hometown teams. I don't know why, but like, cause like my, my, my parents and a lot of my friends and their parents, every, you know, everyone's Dodgers fans, Laker fans, you know, a couple spring, uh, Clippers sprinkled in there, but I was always like, I didn't have a team. I, I really rooted for players because my love was football. And so when it came to, like, basketball and baseball, I didn't really care that much. Mm. And I, I don't know why. Like, I'd always cheer for, like, the Celtics when the Lakers were playing the Celtics just to, like, get <laughs> under people's skin and annoy them. But as I've gotten older, I've, I've, I've become more of a fan of the hometown teams and appreciated players like Kobe and are big fans of those guys. And um, so, yes. But I did get to see that those guys play and always have had a respect and appreciation for the greats. Oh. I mean, yeah, you, we can't say fairer than that. You've got so many great sporting legends that have come out of not just California, but um, obviously LA and that area. But so we watch a lot of American movies, don't we, guys? And we've seen a lot of films that have got, you know, around high school films. You know, you've got your like your American Pies and all the different TV, the films that we like to watch out here. And it, it definitely seems like, and this is just the movies, maybe, but like high schoolers in Cali, they they they, they got a bit of swagger to them. You know, they they you know they think you know is that is that true? Is that fair, or is it like a bit like a bit of a misinterpretation, misrepresentation? I think I think you always have to you know watch movies and TV, anything that's produced, you got to take with a grain of salt. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a West Coast vibe, there's a Cali swag. Um, we're kids though. So, I mean, you know, like all, all these movies can, can be a little bit extra, but there's yeah. definitely, there's definitely some accuracy within some things like that. Or, um, you know, it's, it's LA, it's California that, you know, there's a pretty positive and, um, I don't know where I'm looking for, but there's a reputation and a kind of, 
like you said, a swagger about being from there, growing up there that is present, but to a, to an extent. So don't don't read into th- things too much. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Did you well, find that those those particular films, you know, when, when you were watch, watching them or when, when people had mentioned them, did you find that yourself kind of cringing a little bit and going, oh, that, that's not like us? Or did you find yourself sometimes going, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit like that? You know, that kind of... No, it see, like when I watch bit. movies, I just, I watch them for what they are. You know, some people, mm-hmm. like I have, I've had friends growing up whose their parents are in the movie industry and they can't watch films because they know everything that goes on behind them and how everything's made. Oh, wow. I'm yeah so like they you know there's no enjoyment in watching movies um I'm just I'm someone who enjoys going to the movies to you know I can get lost in it it's whether it's accurate inaccurate it's a movie it is what it is and I enjoy the film for it being the film um all these unrealistic action movies that you know the guys doing backflips and dodging every bullet like it's never gonna happen but i love it for what it is, so. i don't look yeah. in i don't watch the movies and be like oh that's accurate that's inaccurate there's sometimes i might have a little opinion or commentary but i usually just watch because i enjoy watching and it's a good escape from you know the grind and and regular life is there any accuracy to like obviously you've got that I mentioned like high schools in Cali, but like then you've got the, the films, even though no matter where they are in America, the high school quarterback is always like the guy. Is that, yeah. is that, is that, is that, is there a little bit of truth? There's a little bit of truth to that, especially out in, in the West coast. Um, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of talented players and just in the game of football, um, especially as you progress in, in levels. So college to NFL, like the, the quarterback position is very important. And I'm not just saying that to, you know, toot my own horn or anything, but it's, it's a very prestigious and um, vital role to the team. And, you know, I think uh, especially out in California and, and on the West coast that our, the position of quarterback is produces a lot of really good players so there is a little bit of accuracy in those TV shows or movies where, you know, the quarterback's the the star, you know, star guy or um, gets all the attention and whatnot. And um, like I said before, every show, every movie has its own plot and agenda that they're trying to push. But there is a little bit of accuracy to that. But there's always, you know, you've got your TV shows that, that star or receiver or running back or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So. Um, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, football is a team sport, and you'll you'll usually find that those teams and those movies or or shows are really good squads if they're winning, or they yeah. fall short because there's only a couple star players and and you can't win like that. But um, yeah, to answer your question more direct, there is a little bit of accuracy. When, when, sorry, let me just. When, when do you realize that you want to be kind of a quarterback? I know you said you wanted to be an NFL player, you know, an American football player since a very young age. But after that little period of playing O-line, when was it you thought, oh, you know, I'm actually quite good at throwing the ball. This could be kind of me. Yeah. No, I, it was that young age. It wasn't just NFL player. Like, I, I wanted to play right. an NFL quarterback. So, um, like I said, those the, the first year to two years, whenever I wasn't playing quarterback, it was literally just a kid running around you know, okay. joy in life. I, I think once I understood the game, yeah, which was, was shortly after that, and I started playing quarterback, I knew that was what I wanted to do. I knew, you know, I was blessed to always be able to throw the ball pretty well and nice. be pretty smart and cerebral. And like I said, as I got older, I only just continued to, to work on my, my craft and fine tune my skills and grow and um, become, you know, where, where I am today. Did that change, you know, did that change the way you watched football when you were watching it as you start to develop as a quarterback? Did it change oh, yeah. the way you watch the game more? Yeah, I don't watch it. Like, you know how I just mentioned how I watch movies and shows. I can't watch football just to watch football. Mm. Every yeah. time I watch a game, I'm, I'm looking at little things. I'm, I'm, I have a different perspective. Um, I'm looking at the defense more than just watching the game. Now, sometimes you can wa- you can just enjoy watching a game or appreciate good plays, but mm-hmm. as a quarterback, yeah, you, you learn to, to see things and to view things differently. And, you know, when you start watching just your, your Sundays and Monday night footballs or 
or you're just watching other football games or you go back and you watch your high school play, you're looking at a bunch of different other things than what you did back in the day. It's not just, oh, we're just watching people throw and catch the ball and exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. breaking down every little deal. What would I do here? What's the situation? What do I see coming? So um, it, it's pretty cool, though. It's really fun to do that. Well, you, you talked about your progression and realized, you know, at a young age you wanted to be a quarterback. And it's fair to say that with with any swagger of being a high school quarterback, it's very fair to say that you killed, you killed it in high school. Like, you had a fantastic high school career. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we're not going to do is that I know that through throughout your high school and college career that you know people talked about other names and always comparing players so I'm not going to do that but I am going to throw in as another name that was out there when you were playing uh, in high school was of course Josh Rosen who's obviously now in the NFL but being in California now we've spoken to guys who've played uh, quarterback in you know high school in uh, Trenton New Jersey all the way to Florida, which is a hotbed for high school. And California is up there among the, the elite. How do yeah. you stand out, as good as you are and as good as we know you are, how do you stand out in such a talented crowd? Yeah, I mean, it was loaded. I mean, we had Rosen, Darnold, um, Kyla Murray, Jerry Stidham, Blake Barnett, myself, among t- tons of others, uh, Drew Locke. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of guys that I can just rattle through. Um, and that's what I was talking about is is the quarterback class, but also the quarterbacks out West were are loaded. Um, and it's become that way increase, you know, even more increasingly over the years. But just how do you stand out? I think for myself, I, I've, I've, uh, I've always had a pretty mature mentality and mindset. I've never tried to like compare myself to anyone else or um, just focus. I, I think the biggest thing is just focus on yourself, it, not being selfish. But if you try to get caught up in everyone else's business, you're not going to be taking care of, of your business and what you need to be doing. Um, so I think it's just continue, especially at the age, just continuing to work on what you need to work on, fine-tuning your skills, you know, becoming a better player. Um, and then it's just competing, and that's what I love doing, and that's what was super cool about having all that talent is every camp that was out there, whether Elite 11 or a college camp, you have tons of opportunity to go compete against the best, and you get to show out or, or compete right alongside them or you're going to have, you know, not as good a day. And um, – and you can't control what they do. You can't control what other coaches think. You can't, to an extent, I should say, but you can't control, like, if a coach is looking at Josh for a certain reason and you're missing out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a fine line between what you can do, what you can't do, and, and competing, but also worrying too much about what he's doing. You kind of just got to put your head down, grind, and and – make the most of what you got. And unfortunately, you know, I, I've been blessed with enough ability and, and put in a ton of work and, and, and good enough to where even with a handful of other guys that were highly touted, highly recruited guys, I was in that group and, and still highly recruited myself and had all, all the options in the world. And um, everyone's got their own journey though. And everyone's got their own path. So some of those guys are already in the league or a couple of years in and I'm still finishing up and, that's just how it is, but you can't, you know, you can't look at it with a negative mindset. That's just how life works. Sure. No, I, I, I get that for sure. And your, your recruitment went um, fantastic. And I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to take a quick break from talking football on the field and, and, and talk about off it and talking about something that's really important in your life, um, which is your religion and your faith. Um, it's been very important to you. You've, you know, you've, you've, mentioned it quite a few times in many interviews about your path and your journey and, and where it's got you and where it's going to lead you of course um but of course another uh, religion is, is hugely popular and a huge thing um in, in many athletes and many people of course and one one athlete who uh was of course very very known for his his, his strong um, religion and belief uh was florida gator tim tebow who i know you know very well um you know, you were both coached by the, the QB guru, Steve Clarkson. 
Um, so yeah, and you, I think you went to a Team TiVo Foundation event like a year or so ago. Um, tell me, you, you, do you have a close relationship with, with Tim? No, I don't have a close relationship with Tim. I obviously know who he is, and um, but I've I've never actually met Tim. Um, I just see him all over the place, and I don't know if he's heard about me or not. I know he's a he he does some college football stuff, so he might. But um, I mean, that's someone for sure that I've looked up to in in different ways than just being a quarterback um, off the field. That dude's an amazing human being and man, and I love what he stands for and how he carries himself. And um, so I have all, you know, all the respect in the world for him and um, definitely, you know, would point, you know, and I, I, I point to him for a young guy that is like looking for someone to model their life after, not just on the field. Um, and I hope I can be someone that has, that kind of impact in the game as well. Do you, do you find that you're, uh, you find that, that as the older you get and the more you play, you find that that, you know, that your faith helps you to, to kind of relax more. Do you feel that you're more controlled now than maybe a few years ago when you were like, you know, as you, you continue 100%. down the path, you know, you've got this kind of belief that, you know, you know what you want to do, but you've also got something there that's almost like a kind of somebody holding your hand saying, I'm here with you. We're going to yeah. do this together. Does that kind of help you as you, as we, especially at the moment as we navigate through coronavirus and you know mm -hmm. the the other things that we're, we're dealing with through life? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just and whether it's football, life, coronavirus, school, um, job opportunity, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, my, like I said, I talk so much about my faith and I'm so deeply rooted in it. That's that's my foundation. Um, you know, along with my family, but um, that's who I am at, you know, at the core of my being. And without that, I think life would be a lot different. And I just, I go throughout life, um, not nonchalantly, like I'm very, have a sense of urgency and very kind of detailed and in, in, um, in order, but um, it gives me just like, I, like you kind of mentioned, a uh, a comfort it gives me a relaxation it gives me a peace um where i'm just not worried about anything um i'm very you know i, I stay down to earth i'm very um respectful and, and appreciative of just life in general and every 24 hours and um the biggest thing is is i know you know my creator i know my savior i know who i am and who he who he designed me to be, and I'm comfortable with that. And I have a hope for the future because of what I believe in. And, and I know not everyone sees the same thing, um, but I think it's you know having a belief in something more than yourself and something and a higher power is mm -hmm. is something that's only beneficial for an athlete because um, that it it gets your mind and it gets your hope and it gets your belief in something else rather than just yourself. And, yeah. um, you find in this world, whether what well, doesn't matter what religion you are, but there's so many different things in this world that people try to reach to. And I think like when I was younger, even though I was a, a Christian and, and still am today and, and believe the same things, I was just less mature. So I didn't know certain things. I didn't have as deep of a, a grasp and understanding in certain things. So you, you're, you find yourself um, like I can look back and, and remember like reaching for things for fulfillment or trying to have so much control over a certain situation or life that you lose it or you end up like you end up accomplishing or reaching whatever you're reaching for, but then it's like not as satisfying. It's like, what's the next thing? Um, and those are learning experiences now that I try to share with some younger guys because it's not about that. There's life is about so much more and football is, is mm -hmm. such a minute detail of my identity and my life, but it's something, it's my passion. It's what I believe I was born to do. And it's a platform for me that I want to use to my fullest capabilities and I want to maximize my potential on the field, but I want to use everything that comes with football to, um, speak to other people, to, to build others up, to, 
to share my faith, share my story. And whether you believe the same things as me or not, I'm not as concerned with that. I'll let the Lord do his work. I just want to bring the best out of other people. I want to, to, you know, build them up, bring positives. Cause I think whether you're a Christian or not, you can learn a lot from the values and the principles and especially football. I think they correlate really well. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, my faith is everything to me and, um, I'm just very okay. fortunate to, you know, to have the, the local standard that I got. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic answer. Really. Um, it's, it's such a good insight that. That's no, it's really, really fascinating. Really great to hear, uh, Brady. So back on the field, um, we're going to touch on this briefly. Uh, I can't not. You were the highest ranked quarterback in Arizona State Sun Devil history um, when you went to 10th. Uh, how did that feel? Um, a great program at Arizona State and, and being the, most, the highest recruited quarterback there's ever been. Yeah, I mean, I mean it was super cool. I mean, you got to, like, the, the whole ranking system and stars and, event, like, all that stuff, it, it's, it's cool when you're going through it. And, but, like, if we're just being honest, and I think it is just through all the way out through life, through high, from high school to college and college to the NFL. I think um, it's really cool to be a highly recruited guy to have all these great ratings and stuff. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to, you know, what are you going to do when you get the opportunity? Um, and so I was, I was very, you know, fortunate and and um, privileged and and happy to be that guy for Arizona state. And as far as like the highest recruited or rated quarterback, but let's just be honest. I, I played a game and a half there. Mm. So I, yeah, didn't do that. True, I, didn't, I didn't do anything for Arizona state. Um, and you know, there's tons of stories around the world of, of highly rated guys that come in and don't play it down or they do. And they're not in. And, and there's also guys that walk on and, you know, Baker Mayfield stories walk on and become. Mm. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm honored to have been that for Arizona State, but like I said, my journey, you know, God put me on a, on a journey and a path that I couldn't, I obviously couldn't see at the time. And it, you know, my, my work was not going to be done there. And so um, I loved every second being there. Arizona, Arizona State's a place I'll always be proud to say I'm a, you know, I'm a sun devil and somewhere I love, like Arizona is beautiful and I, I can end up potentially living there if I wanted to because I just mm. love it that much but um yeah that just it wasn't wasn't in the cards for me to, to be the guy there and I've ended up in Memphis and that's the best thing for me but um it was cool to be that for sure there's a lot of fun memories and and good feelings when it when when you say those things and, and you realize that you are the highest rated quarterback to ever be brought into a program that's doing, you know, having success. So, yeah, it's, it's true. It's true. It's all about what you do with your opportunities. But you have your opportunity and you've had it for the last couple of seasons. You transferred to Memphis. Have you, are you rocking some, some Tigers gear as well at the moment? Yeah, I'm rocking our, our cotton ball gear. Cotton oh, ball, yes. very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, so you transferred to Memphis. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask you about this, the, away from the, from, away from the, uh, the field. The city, where, where's the hot spots? What's the good food in Memphis? For anyone who doesn't know much about Memphis, Tennessee, what, what, what is the city of Memphis saying? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of good food options in, in Memphis. I think the South in general has a lot of quality food. So um, you come out here, there's tons of obviously like barbecue and ribs and stuff like that. You, you, you'll find plenty of options of like that and, and fried chicken. Um, so, you know, you come down here, you go down to Beale Street or, you know, downtown Memphis. Um, there's plenty. Uh, there's, there's not just a handful that I'll, I can just give to you. But, like, it, it, Memphis is a special spot. And it's different for sure. But there's definitely a lot of rich history here. There's a lot of um, culture. Um, and there's just a great, like, vibe and – an attitude about Memphis that's, you know, 
we have the saying Memphis versus everybody, and it, it truly feels that way. Um, I feel like this is an underrated city. It's an underrated um, area that it's all about the, the work ethic, the grind, um, proving yourself, getting after it, and just performing. Doesn't Not just in sports, I'm saying like the city in general. Um, mm. And so, you know, you've heard myself say it and, and plenty of others. Memphis is Memphis. Like people ask, what's the best way to describe Memphis? Give me one word. And we say Memphis. And um, you truly have to get here and, and – you don't got to like live here, but you got to be around it or, or visit to experience that and to, to realize it for yourself. Um, so off the field, Memphis is something I've appreciated. It's a different environment than the West Coast. So I'm an easy go with the flow guy. It wasn't like I had culture shock. I actually enjoyed having a little different scenery around myself and being in a different city. Um, but um, I will always be definitely a West Coast guy until the day I die, but I love you know. <laughs> Well, you saved me on asking one a question because you've led on to it really well. You just said Memphis is one word, it's Memphis. But I had, when you think of Memphis Tigers, the team, the school, the fans, the people of Memphis, what three words would you use to describe them uh, to a bunch of British guys who don't know much about the culture or the school ethos or the, the ethos yeah. of the city? I would say you can, you can just say Memphis if you want. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. There's, when you when you talk about our team and our program, it's one, it's a family. Two, I mean, we we the grind. I think grind is another word. Um, and then third, I would say is just we like win, like we win. Um, so like we're a family. I think. Our, our, our football team, but also the, the program and, and the way this community rallies around us. Um, it's a very tight knit group, specifically our team. We're, I mean, everyone, everyone talks about being a brotherhood and stuff. And I've been in multiple locker rooms and I've talked with buddies and friends that I've had all across the nation at other places. It all sounds good, but there, there's only a handful of spots or, you know, a few programs that have a true, like really close knit unit. Um, and it also depends on the year you have, you know, some recruiting classes or some teams, they're just not tight knit. Now it doesn't mean, you know, there's, there's not good camaraderie, but they're just not as close, mm. you know, last year's group and this year's group, it, it, it's a true brotherhood. We all have grown with, with each other. We've been together for multiple years, know who we are as, as individuals, but uh, we know each other off the field and we're very tight. So that's the family aspect. The grind, kind of like I said about the city, it's just a blue collar, you know, nose to the, to the grindstone, the work ethic, um, the, the prove you wrong mentality, the just get after it, you know, sh shut your mouth and, and do the work. That's what we're all about. Our, you know, our training is second to none and, um, how we approach that training and how we attack it is is a very special and unique aspect of our team. And then winning, I think we just win. Um, it's not always the prettiest. Sometimes it's beautiful, and, and then we throttle kids. Um, <laughs> but I think you've seen it over the, the last however many years. You know, obviously last year was a big-time season and a lot of wins, but we perform really well. We play well. Um, this city shows out college game day, you know, our, our entire city took a W on that one, not just on the field, but mm, the, the show out, out for college game day. I think those guys on that, on that, um, on that show to this day would say that Memphis was one of the, the, the best cities they, they um, visited. Mm. And then, you know, our city traveling to the cotton bowl yeah. outnumbered Penn state's fans um, had a, awesome turnout and a great atmosphere for us when we were on the field just made it a, an even better atmosphere and a better experience um so yeah those are the three words i'd probably use that's no that's that's i mean that's great that's a fantastic answer i'm sure the people of memphis uh are, are, are delighted to hear those uh fantastic sentiments so that's all things that you knew that you know now about the city but you didn't know obviously too much about the city before transferring there. So why, why, why Memphis? Why, why is that where you are now? 
Um, when I was going through the process, I just knew um, if I was going to transfer, it wasn't like it is now where you have the portal. Um, you had to get a release before you could even talk to anyone. And I had kind of, I didn't plan to transfer, but I ended up doing it. And so I was really kind of, kind of late, I would say, you know, like the spring semester hadn't started, but I was, we were already halfway through our like winter break. And that's when I figured out I was going kind of going to do that. Um, so I knew with the amount of time I had and also just with the circumstances, I'm going to have to go somewhere where I've got, you know, a previous relationship or, um, I got a connection or someone knows, they just know who I am. They either recruited me heavily throughout high school or I had played for them while at Arizona state. Cause I had like three or four different coaches at Arizona state as far as offensive coordinators. Um, so it was already a shortened list. I already kind of condensed it down and knew like these are the four spots that I, I really would look at and have an opportunity and then um, obviously I've Norvell recruited me since like my sophomore year of high school we've had a great relationship just my, me and him but also our families and he was very honest with me you know he told me nothing was going to be promised and I don't expect anything to be promised I don't you know want anything given to me but he just let me know that Riley Ferguson was out the door and this was the situation in our quarterback room and you'll have an opportunity to compete and I know who you are and I know your capabilities and if you do what you do you'll have a good chance to, to be the starter here um, and kind of stemming back to my faith I knew I was going to come back stronger and better than ever from my injury um, so I had no doubts about that and I just wanted a chance to play right away and so I'd never visited Memphis. I didn't know anyone on the team. I just knew I had an opportunity. And I was very, you know, like I said, I'm very firm in my faith. And it was like, it was a, it was a confidence and also kind of like an effort. Like, and I just told him, like, I'm coming. So I just sent it to Memphis and never seen the city, never seen nothing and just wanted to play ball. And, <laughs> and hit.